Hello, I'm Alexandra from Mercer Middle School, video two for Seattle Public Schools Math 8 videos. Today we're going to be working on solving equations. This was made in collaboration with Ms. Hugh from JAMS and Ms. Burke from District Office. Thanks for joining us. For today's video lesson, you're going to need three different things. A piece of paper to write on, or maybe a composition book, something to write with, a pen or pencil. It would also be great if you had your Pearson workbook. You can also find that online at pearsonrealize.com. If you don't have any of those things, I just invite you to watch and learn today. If you want to re-watch this on the SPS YouTube channel, if you're not already watching it there, you could always take notes on the second watch. Our do now today is the same as last time. We did estimation 180 last time using quantity or things you can count or measure. So we had bottle caps in a jar and at the end I revealed how many bottle caps really were in that jar. We talked about coming up with a reasonable estimate. So today a reasonable estimate you're gonna try to figure out is the height of this pergola. This vertical distance from here to here the pergola is this wooden structure my neighbor has in her garden that she built that has lights on it and her garden and she has plants growing up the side of it. So use context clues from the picture. Look around for things in the picture that you might be able to estimate a known height, like the height of a person, you have me standing there, or the height of other things you see in that picture. Remember that to come up with a reasonable estimate, you should come up with a range. Come up with what you think a low reasonable limit would be for the height in inches. So by the way, we're going to find height in inches. We could have chosen feet, but I'm going to use inches. And then come up with what you think a high reasonable limit would be to that range. And then after that, a good estimate. I will reveal the answer to this estimation 180 due now at the end. Today's lesson on solving equations covers content from four different lessons in Pearson. I know that seems like a lot, but I'm just going to cover the basics. When you are done with this lesson, I want you to go into PearsonRealize.com or your workbook you have at home and find lessons 2-1 through 2-4 and work on those practice problems. The work from this lesson should help you on those practice problems. We have four learning targets today because we have four lessons we're covering. Remember, I won't be teaching all the details from these four lessons, but the basic ideas. So by the end of the video, you should be able to solve equations that have like terms on one side, solve equations with variables on both sides, solve multi-step equations using more than one approach, and determine the number of solutions. Now in this first video, I'm in my backyard. I have this balance scale my kids play on all the time, and I'm gonna use it to explain the idea of balance when it comes to algebraic equations. So watch this next two minutes, and then afterwards, I'm gonna show you the algebra that we can use to represent these situations. Take a look. So what we have here in my backyard is a teeter-totter. A teeter-totter is a balance scale. There's a center point and there are two different places I can put objects. Now to see if those objects are the same weight, I could put one object on one side and another object on the other side and if they are in fact the same weight they would balance. So in this case because it's real life it can be a little hard to show balance but what this shows me is that this brick on this side is the same weight as this brick on this side because they're pretty closely to being balanced. Now, if I were to put two bricks on one side, it would not be equal to the brick on this side. So adding another brick on this side, way off balance. This side now weighs more than this side. Now, this is like an equation we would do in the math classroom. We have uh, one object, equals the same weight as the other object, or in this case, an inequality. Two of these same size objects do not equal the weight of that one object. So in an equation, this might look like if this was an unknown value x, I actually don't know how much this brick weighs, I would say two x's do not equal one x. This is an inequality. Notice they're not balanced. If I wanted to show they are balanced, I could show that one brick, if I'm careful, one brick or one x, one unknown weight of the brick equals one x over there. Now in a classroom we often do something to one side of an equation and then we say we have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. So let's do that here. If I were to want to add one x to this side, one brick weight to this side, I'm allowed to do that as long as I maintain equality. 
if I add 1x to one side, I would have to add 1x to this side. And if I do that, now again, real life can be a little tricky sometimes to show math concepts because I have to make sure that I put, place these the same distance from the center point or they won't actually be balanced. So now I can show that I added 1x to this side and 1x to that side and they're balanced again. So I can do that in equation two. If I had 2x over here and I have 2x over here, I could take away x from both sides, take away 2x from both sides, and they'd still be balanced. Now I can also use an equation to figure out the value of something. So in this case, let's say that I don't know the weight of my chickens. So if I wanted to figure that out, I could weigh a brick, figure out how much that brick weighs, and then compare it to the weight of my chickens. So let's see if I can get these chickens to sit over there. That's going to be the hard part. All right, so I'm not going to reveal the chickens yet. I'm going to show you on the next line some of the algebra that we can use to represent what happened in this video. From that video, there are four different pictures that I can show you that have some great algebra we can represent. So here we have in the first video picture a brick on one side balancing with a brick on the other side. So we have a balance scale that is equal on one side of weight to the other side of weight. So that would mean we can write an equation. Here we do not know the weight of one brick. So we're going to use a variable. The variable we're going to use is x in this case. Now I could use any letter I wanted, x, c, b, doesn't matter. So I'm going to use an x. x is going to represent the weight of one brick. The weight of a brick is unknown, so I have to use a variable. I didn't tell you how much that brick weighed. So because these are balanced, there is an equality that exists. So I can write x, the weight of one brick, equals the other side of this balance scale is also another brick, x. So this equation that I've written represents the situation I have in real life. Now there is another word you need to know. It's the word coefficient. There is one x. That one is a coefficient. That is the multiplier of x. And then we also have a term. This is a term. If our expression said 3 plus x, there would be two terms, 3 and x. In this case, there's one term on the left-hand side equals another term on the right-hand side. Now, if I were to try to solve this equation, I would have to think about what values for x could make this equation true. So let's try some values and see what we get. Let's say the weight of the brick was 5. 5 pounds equals 5 pounds. That's true. 5 is a solution. What if we try the brick was 6 pounds? 6 pounds over here on the left equals 6 pounds on the right. That would balance solution. If I were to keep on trying like this, I would find there's an infinite number of solutions. So I'm going to write infinite solutions. That means that there are an infinite number of x values that could make this equation true. I could also show that by using properties of equality. I could look on both sides of this equation and see that they both have variable terms. So I'm going to try to solve for x. Minus x on one side. So to maintain equality, I'd have to subtract or minus x on the other side. x take away x is 0, and 1x take away x is also 0. 0 equals 0, that's true, that's always true. So that tells me this equation has infinite solutions. Let's look at the second drawing, or the second picture, sorry, from our video. In this case, on the left-hand side of our balance scale, I put two bricks. So I'm going to write a, a term or an expression that represents two bricks. So I'm going to write 2x. That would be 2 multiplied by the weight of one brick. And on this side, I have one brick. So I'm going to write 1x. Now you might be confused for a second of why I'm putting an equal sign here, because they're obviously not equal. But I'm going to talk for a second about if I were to write an equality, could I find a solution to that equality? Let's write it down. 2x's equal 1x. If I think about this for a second, could that ever be true? 
Now this doesn't have infinite solutions because I can even find immediately a solution that doesn't work. If five was the weight of the bricks, five times two is 10 pounds on the left here, and one times five is five pounds on the right. 10 pounds equals five pounds? No, not true. So already I know that solution doesn't work, so it can't have infinite solutions. What if I try six pounds? Six times two on the left equals one times six on the right, and that's not true. So I'm starting to think if I keep testing a bunch of x values, maybe I'm never gonna find a solution. That would mean this equation had no solutions. But if you really think about it, there's one solution to this equation, one possible way, one possible x value that would make this true. So take a moment to think about, what is it? What x value could make this true? Now, I almost missed this when I first was looking at this problem. One of the other eighth grade math teachers looked at this and he said, no, 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 this has one solution. And I was like, oh gosh, I missed it. What if the brick weighed nothing? What if the brick was zero pounds? What if it was like one of those styrofoam bricks that weighs pretty much nothing? Two times zero is zero equals one times zero is zero. So X must be zero. So this has one solution. This equation is only true when x equals zero. Now I can show that algebraically. I have variable terms on both sides, so I can take away an x from over here as long as I maintain equality by doing the same thing on the other side of the equal sign. 1x minus 1x is zero, and 2x minus 1x is 1x. So look, algebraically, I've shown that x must be zero for this equation to be true. Let's take a look at the third picture. In this case, I've shown two x's over here equal two x's over here. So that equation would look like this, two x equals two x. Now this is really the same situation as up here. All I did was I added an extra one x to one side and I maintained equality by just adding an extra one x to the right hand side. So this is also a situation where this has infinite solutions. 2x equals 2x is always true for any value of x. It's always true that 2x bricks on one side are going to be the same weight as 2 bricks on the other side. Now this last picture is right before I reveal what I'm going to do with the chickens on this balance scale. So I'm saying that I've got an x over here equals something over here. It's a blank empty area here. So I'm gonna go off screen on the next video, I'm gonna show you what happens. All right, I'm not gonna hold off on this video at all. I'm just gonna play it right away. It's fairly short, and then we'll talk about the algebra afterwards. Here we go. So here I've got Scavenger, the golden one, and Charlie, this black one. And if I can get Charlie to perch on here, she likes to perch on things, so I think I can do that. So here I've got Scavenger, the golden one, and Charlie, this black one. And if I can get Charlie to perch on here, she likes to perch on things, so I think I can do that. If I can get him to stay still, and I can give enough space for Scavenger, I can get these two to stay still long enough. You can see here, if I adjust it, see some guys. I can show you that these two chickens weigh about the same with one brick. Now, if I wanted to solve for the weight of one chicken, how would I do that? So if I were to take one chicken off, I can see here that one brick weighs more than Charlie weighs. So think about that for a second. One brick equals the weight of two chickens. I have to admit, that makes me laugh every single time. First of all, I was super impressed with how well-behaved my chickens were. So Scavenger, the golden one here, decided he wanted a little more time on camera. So there they go. So let's think about what math is represented here. On the next page, I'm going to walk you through for a second what we can figure out about the chicken's weight based on what we know about the brick's weight.
All right, so here are two different screenshots of that video to show you some math that we can show algebraically. So in this case, we have the weight of a brick. Now, I'm actually going to stop using x, a variable. So the variable is used here because I do not know the weight of that brick. I cannot tell you the number yet because I don't know. Uh, I did end up weighing the brick-ish and found that each brick weighs about nine pounds. Now, based on that information, I actually am going to erase the x that I've been using, and I'm going to evaluate for x. What that means, I'll write that word down here. I'm going to evaluate for x equals 9. So now that I know the weight of that brick, I'm actually not going to use the word variable anymore. I'm going to use the word constant. I'm using that word because the weight of the brick is not going to change at any point here. So that is a constant weight. Constant is a known quantity, a known amount. So I now know that a brick is nine pounds. Now what I don't know is the weight of a chicken. So I'm gonna use a new variable. We're gonna use the variable C for chicken. You can use any letter you want. So often in word problems or in stories, we use a variable that matches the thing in the story. You don't have to, but I'm using C to stand for chicken. So in this case, I don't have one C. I have two chickens that weigh about the same amount. Now this is real life. I'm not gonna tell you that Scavenger and Charlie weigh exactly the same, but for this math problem, let's say they weigh about the same amount. So I'm actually gonna write 2C, C being a variable for the weight of one chicken, of one chicken. I wrote 2C, I put the coefficient two because I have two multiplied by the C or the weight of a chicken. I'm not saying that the chickens weigh two pounds. I'm saying there's two of the chickens, two times C. Now I can write a new equation. I can write an equation based on what I see on this balance scale. So take a moment and think, how could I write an algebraic representation of what you see on that balance scale? I'll give you about five seconds to think about that. So in this case, we have nine pounds on one side of the balance scale, and that is equal to the weight of two chickens. So this equation is true because I can physically see these are balanced. Because I know that this is an equality, I can solve for C by dividing by two on both sides or multiplying each side by a half. So in this case, I am gonna show you both methods. So I could say, well, one C, I could divide two C by two, and two divided by two is one, I left with one C. I'm not gonna write the coefficient of one, but you can if you want, you can put a one in front of that C. Now, it's not true, I cannot write nine here, that is not true. I know that each chicken does not weigh nine pounds because two of them weigh nine pounds, so I can't write nine. If I'm dividing the right-hand side of the equation or the right expression, I have to also divide the left expression, or the equality is not true, or the equation is not gonna be true. 9 divided by 2 is 4 and a half, or 4.5. So I'm going to write 4 and 1 half. Now, 9 halves is a fine answer, but I'm going to write it as a mixed number, 4 and a half. So I can check if I'm right. I can put my 4 and a half back into the original equation. 9 equals, I'll write check right here, 9 equals 2 multiplied by 4 and a half. Is that a true statement? Let's find out. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times a half is 1, 8 and 1 makes 9. Yep, so 9 equals 9, that is true. So that's what I can do once I have variables and constants and I set them equal to each other. Now in this situation on the right-hand side, I have a new equation I can write. I have here a constant, which in this case is 9. 9, oh no, it's not, wait a second, it's not 9. Oh no, no, it is 9, sorry. My son just walked in the room, so I got distracted for a second. The weight of one brick is nine, um, equals one chicken. Well, that's not true. It's not equal, it's not balanced. So what equation could I write instead? Well, what I could show here is that, in this case, nine is gonna be greater than the weight of one chicken, but this situation is similar to what I just did when I solved for the weight of one chicken. It shows that one chicken, weighs less than nine, 
and I see two chickens is equal to nine. So this would represent an inequality. What we're now going to do is introduce one more amount that I'm going to weigh. You can see here I have my son Liam sat on one side of the balance scale and I kept stacking bricks until I found an equal amount. I found that four bricks equal one Liam. So if I write that as an equation, four times nine, the weight of one brick, equals the weight of L, unknown. How heavy is Liam? Nine times four is 36. Now that I have an amount for Liam, an amount for a chicken, and the amount for a brick, I can use those three known amounts or constants to write an equation that could find the weight of something I don't know yet. So let's say I have a big bag of dirt in my yard, actually multiple bags of dirt, and I want to find out how much those bags weigh. I can set up an equation to figure that out. I can put those bags on the balance scale, and here's how I might do it. I might start out by saying, well, I know how much Liam weighs. He's 36 pounds. I know one chicken is nine pounds. Oh, that's not true. No, he's 4.5 pounds. It was two chickens was nine pounds. And I know that one brick, X earlier we used X for a brick, was nine pounds. So now I can say, well, what if I introduce an unknown here? Y equals question mark. That is a bag of dirt. So watch how I'm gonna set this up to figure out the weight of that bag of dirt. Let's say that I took the balance scale and on that balance scale, I put some objects. Let's say on this side, I put um, a big bag of dirt, it's Y, and I put on some chickens and bricks. So I've got two bricks, two bricks, two bricks, two bricks, and then on each brick, let's put a chicken, another chicken, another chicken, and another chicken. And let's say that on this side, I balance that out equal to the weight of two bags of dirt, a Y and another Y. And I also put Liam, he's a good sport. He's gonna sit right here and hold on to those bags of dirt. What equation is this that I just set up? Let me take a moment to think, how could I represent all those objects that are in balance using variables, coefficients, and constants? Go ahead and think about that for about five seconds. I'm gonna quickly walk you through what that might look like. On this side, I have a bag of dirt, Y, plus the weight of four groups of something, four groups of one chicken, which is 4.5 pounds, and four, oh, I'm sorry, not four, two bricks, which are nine pounds. So four groups, one, two, three, four of a chicken, plus two bricks. On this side of my balance, I have two bags of dirt plus the weight of one Liam, which is 36 pounds. Now I can use my algebra skills to solve this equation now. I can find the one variable in that equation, y, by using properties of equality, and I'm gonna solve until I know what y equals. So let's do that. First, we're gonna use distributive property four groups of 4.5 and four groups of 18. That's two times nine. So I've got y plus, because I haven't done that yet, four groups of 4.5 is 18. I'm gonna do some mental math. 18 times four is 72 equals, I haven't done anything with this yet, so I'm just gonna write two y plus 36. Now I'm gonna combine my like terms. 18 and 72 are both constants, so I can combine them. y plus 90 equals two y or two bags of dirt plus 36. And now I'm so close, I just need to take my constant away from both sides. I'm going kind of fast here, plus 54, and that is zero, so two y is left. Now I see that I have variable terms on both sides, subtract y from both sides, and look what I get, 54 on the left, and on the right, two y's take away one y is one y. So that tells me that I now know a bag of dirt weighs 54 pounds. That's a big bag of dirt. So I used what I knew, my constant terms, which are 36, and this whole term here, four, 4.5, two, and nine, those are all constants, and my variable terms, y and two y, and I was able to solve until I found one y equals 54.
Now that we've gone over some real life examples, I want to circle back to our four learning targets today. When I looked in the Pearson textbook on those four sections, two, one through two, four, I found these four key concepts. So it's a good idea at the end of every lesson to find that key concept above the practice and take a look at it to make sure you're understanding the big ideas. First, I said we were going to learn to combine like terms. So key concept one, this is a coefficient with a variable and a coefficient with the same variable. So these two terms are like. So they combined those two terms and they got 1.4n. We practiced that skill today. Over here, key concept number two involves distributing. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 2x is 14x. That's the distributive property. And then look, they practiced combining like terms again. 14x and x makes 15x. The third key concept was about solving equations with variables on both sides, which we also practiced. They showed a bar model. I used a balanced scale, similar ideas. They're showing that 3x plus 15 is equal in length to 4x plus 12. So then they used properties of equality like I did. They took away 3x from both sides. Then they took away 12, the constant 12, from both sides until they had what x equals, x was 3. Now at the very end, we also, throughout that video on balance, we talked about numbers of solutions. You could have infinitely many solutions. In this case, a situation that ends with 2 equals 2. Remember when we said it will always balance if there's one brick over here and one brick over here? Infinitely many solutions. One solution, where there's only one value that would make that balance scale balanced, for example, x equals 2 or x equals 3. If you solved an equation and saw that, that'd be one solution. Or no solution, meaning a situation where it would never be balanced. Like you could have 2x plus 3 equals 2x plus 5. Go ahead and try to solve that. Take away 2x on both sides. 0 and 0, 3 equals 5. That's never true. 3 never equals 5. So a situation like that would have no solution. Now that you've finished this lesson and done some practice with me, I encourage you to do some practice on your own. Option 1, go to your nearest school site and pick up a packet. It's going to look like this, Video Packet 2, Solving Equations. You could also go to your Pearson workbook or pearsonrealize.com and work on lessons 2-1, 2, 2, 2, 2 3, and 2-4. If you also are thinking of math in your life, you can text it to the number you see on the screen and include your name and school if you'd like to, and we'll feature that in an upcoming video. All right, so to reveal the answer to the estimation 180 do now, I have here a picture of me standing in the garden with the same outfit, the same location, everything, and I don't know if you can see this, you probably can't, but when I put a tape measure from the ground here all the way up to the top of the pergola, it ended up being, let me check my notes, 107.25 was the height of that pergola, 107.25 inches. Now, some of the things in the picture that you may have used to figure out your estimate was maybe you estimated my height. Now, I'm five foot five and a half, and when you take that and turn it into inches, five feet times 12 is 60, I am 65.5 inches tall. Maybe you used me, 65.5, plus however you thought this was extra on top of that would give you a pretty good estimate. Or maybe you looked in the background and saw this doorway. Well, it's in the distance, so it's going to look a little further away. This doorway was actually 80 inches. That's a regulation size for a doorway. Other things in the picture you might have used, maybe you estimated what the height of this little bird feeder was, and then you stacked up numbers of bird feeders until you got that total height. So using strategies such as finding other things in a picture and then multiplying that up would be a nice way of figuring out a good estimate in real life. In video one, we invited you to send in your own thoughts about math you saw in your life, especially about functions. So last week, Elle texted into this number 971-238-4109 and said that they were graphing a function of the number of juggles in red compared to practice days. So they noticed that there were some positive intervals, some negative, but overall, the more they practiced, the better their juggling got. They actually included another amount on this graph, 
time spent practicing on the y-axis in blue, and then same x-axis practice days. Now, you don't have to make yours on the computer like this student did, but this was made in Excel. You could just make it with a piece of paper and pencil if you wanted to. Last week's exit ticket was which one doesn't belong. We gave you four graphs, one, two, three, four, of four different functions. Here are some submissions from last week. Jillian said, all four of them don't belong in some way. Number four is the only one that touches the x-axis twice. True. Number one doesn't belong, says Holden, because all the other graphs have straight lines. This one has swoops or curves. Number three, because it's the only one with positive slope, says Nora. Interval one has positive slope and interval three has positive slope. Interval two is constant. But a lot of you didn't notice that interval two on function four actually has positive slope. Nellie says number three is the only one that touches the x the axes only once and Lily from Jam says number three is the only one that touches at the origin which is the point zero zero on this graph. For this week's which one doesn't belong we have four more that you need to be looking at. You can text in your response to 971-238-4109. Include your name, your school, and your picture and description. You don't have to include your name in your school if you don't want to. So you're looking at these four expressions and saying which one doesn't belong. See you for video three next week.